Hello viewers. I'm in the process of switching my network over to Gigabit from Pen 100. And the switch downstairs is the last remaining piece to get upgraded. So I figured I'd do a video and show the performance before and after the change of switches. So this is the switch I've been using. This is a TP-Link 10100 switch. It's unmanaged. It was a very cheap piece of equipment. But it served me well over the past... I don't even know how long I've had it now. Um, but here's the connection on the computer. As you can see, we're connected at 100 megabits per second. And I really don't care so much about the internet speed as long as it's more than like 15. But I want to test just so we can see here what it's doing. It usually peaks at around 88 to 92, somewhere in that range. And then uh, I'm going to cancel this out here. And I'm going to copy over a video. Just choose this random video here. And see what our transfer rate's going to be. Usually it's better than that. Usually it's about 12. I don't know why that's going so doggone slowly. Well, anyways, usually it's about 12 at, at best. You know, of course it, it, it varies, but that's what we're getting now for whatever reason. So, um, let's go ahead and get this switch unboxed and installed. Now this is an 8 port switch, uh, which is more than I need downstairs. really can't fathom any scenario where I would use more than 3 ports down here. But the difference of a 4 port versus an 8 port was all of $2. So I figured it would be kind of dumb to not spend 2 extra dollars and have twice the expandability should I ever come up with a need for it. Now this switch is actually better in this use case down here because physically speaking this switch has um, I gotta move this tripod up here this switch the new one has mounting holes so I can actually hang it on the wall versus just balancing it here like this which is what I've been doing so let's disconnect all of this and this switch by no means is like a, a high-end thing this is a very simple unmanaged switch which is just all I need down here I don't need anything complicated so this should be fairly plug-and-play I'm gonna have to move the cables around a bit because of the amount of tension that's on this because it's a little bit bigger is not healthy but just for the video I think it'll hold up. And again, I'll go back and redo that because that's that's very cringy. But anyways, there it is. That's in place. Now let's go over to the computer and see what we have here. We are connected. That's a good sign. Uh, there we go. One gigabit per second. Now the internet speed, I don't think it'll have changed. Yeah, it's about the same. That doesn't surprise me. But what should have changed is how this works. Alright, clearly we've got some troubleshooting to do because upstairs with the very same switch, I was getting about 130. Now I'm only getting 7. So we're going to have to, I'm going to run a test over the cord coming down here, see if there's an issue with the cord, and um, if, if need be, I'll, I'll uh, I really don't want to have to run any wire. I don't know, let me uh, do some evaluation here. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is put a joiner in here. Oh, well, this probably has a proper name, but I'm going to call it a joiner. This cable here, unless I jack something up when I put the router in, this cable is a direct run upstairs into the router. So, let's connect the computer straight to that and see what happens. Now, 
Now, of course, when I connected the switch upstairs, it was completely plug and play. Actually, I did it while I was eating lunch. And it worked perfect. But now, because the camera is on for everyone to see, it's got to screw up. So, that's interesting. I think I may have a spoiled cable because the, uh, this should certainly not be only a hundred, it should be a whole gigabit. Well, I'll have to get the tester out now and see what's going on with this cord. I certainly hope the cord didn't go bad because I don't want to have to run a new line. Here is the tester that I have. It is an El Cheapo tester, but it works. So I'm going to take this and connect this onto my uh, line right here, if I can get it undone. And then I gotta put batteries in this other piece and plug it up upstairs. Okay, so interestingly enough, the cable is testing out okay. So, the only thing I can think of that's causing the problem at this point would be there's two patch cables upstairs in the network closet that run between this connected wire that runs through the walls and the router. So maybe one of those patch cables is not good enough. It could be just a Cat5 or something like that. Um, or actually, huh, this one right here is a, a Cat5. So, you know what, what maybe I tested this last night and it worked fine, but I used the, the outlet uh, over there, wherever it may be. Hello, connector. I don't know where it is, but anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this, this yellow cord, this patch cord that goes from here to the computer, and see what happens. Alright, so the conclusion is that it's an issue with the wiring that's running through the wall. So, I'm going to have to upgrade that to a Cat 6 and try again.